when in 2010 the, the, the paper was written, how, how many people were involved in that process? Uh, 2008. 2008. How many people were involved in the process? Um, it was prim- uh, The paper was primarily me. Uh, there were different iterations going back. Um, my document management shit. So there are bits and pieces of changes all over. But how many people? It's mainly you and how many other people were involved? For the paper, me. Other people looked at it for me. and um, So looking at something is not the same as... Yeah. So Vince Serve worked two weekends on this uh, TCP IP. How long did you work on your paper? Uh, the, the basic pa- concept, and then he, he took six months to write it. No, um, I write 6,000 words a day. Um, the paper didn't take that long to write. It was seven pages. It was beautifully short and concise and readable, still readable. Yeah, it was nice and simple. It actually took a lot to cut things out. Um, it was more getting the idea in the first place um, and throwing things away. The, the concept, how it was, evolved. Um, so it wasn't blockchain came and whatever else. Once it clicked, then it was quick. Here at Bitcoin Wednesday, I'm talking to Greg Wright. Greg, how long have you been in this Bitcoin? When does this Bitcoin uh, thing start for you? Uh, before I can remember. Yeah. Before there was Bitcoin. So. Yeah, the, the ideas were already in your head before uh, 2010 or something like that? Uh, some ideas went back to the 90s, but they were totally fucked up and wrong. Um, it took a lot of other things failing to get the uh, current version of Bitcoin. Yeah. Are you still working on it, right? Okay. So the, describe your, your last vision. I mean, you described that you, um, next year, the year before, a year afterwards, we'll have a uh, BSV, which will do million and millions of transactions per second? Effectively, yes. So we want to scale Bitcoin to basically be, do anything people want to do on a world sort of commercial internet. Um, I don't like the way the internet has become, where you have social media trolling, there's no cost, there's no... Uh, I mean, it's a, it's a commons, mm-hmm. and any time you have a commons, you get the tragedy of the commons. So, at we have a lot of tragedy of commons. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So and we need to reinvent them all the time to basically to basically fit in this time. Exactly, and you don't need to actually have people pay a lot, but a small incremental fee for sending a tweet will get rid of a lot of trolls. I mean, there still be some. I mean, you have activist shareholders, so it's not like people are going to stop trolling uh, everyone but if you get trolled maybe you get paid a little bit of money if you want to do things and and block people then that's your right too see censorship is about someone stopping you from talking where you're allowed to be in a public area in your own home that sort of thing but no one has the right to go into someone else's property and then start saying things or slandering them or abusing them. I mean, you, you think that by, by having a transaction, a small fee will help to, to eliminate a lot of the things. But you're also trying to do more, right? You're not only trying to do transaction, but you also want to make a blockchain which allows lots of other data types, you know, even video. You, you want to make real huge... Uh, blocks which allow any kind of type of data to be invo- in- integrated. Well, that's more what other people are doing. I want more transactions, but uh, I'm not going to stop them building. That's the whole nature of permissionless. If they can figure out other things to do and they can use the protocols that we have there, then good. Okay. Can you describe a couple of the different moments in time when you really made a change? First, the first version of blockchain. Uh, of Bitcoin, mm-hmm. then uh, the, the the change to Bitcoin Cash. Why did that happen? Well, there wasn't really a change to Bitcoin Cash and then SV. The, the others changed. That's the whole nature. If you have the original protocol and the others have changed it, we haven't changed. We're the ones who haven't forked. So, um, so every time you're in an uh, ecosystem, the original thoughts, the original protocol, the original thoughts are slowly uh, changed or are basically uh, evolved in a way that you don't that you don't think is uh, does justice to the original thought. But they're not evolved. This isn't a evolutionary coding thing. It's changed. I mean, evolve sounds nice and it sounds organic and people like to say everything evolves and it, it goes through but this isn't evolving and there's no end state that they're moving to they're changing the protocol 
they're building a new protocol based on the other one, except they're using an airdrop to scam people into believing that it's just the way the protocol changes. Mm -hmm. And it's not. Internet didn't go the way you liked. It evolved in a way that basically you know, pissed off a lot of people and basically made us uh, lose our, uh, our belief in it. How did that go with Bitcoin? I mean, and what is the original promise of Bitcoin and can we still, uh, can we still have an alternative of the current financial system and the current uh, you know, transaction system? Okay, well the internet hasn't really changed. IP is still IP. Yeah. It goes right TCP back. IP is still the same, exactly. yeah. yeah. The difference here is new things have been built on top of it. Mm -hmm. Now that's not like Lightning and these other things. They're not built on top of Bitcoin, they're outside. That's like a gateway protocol. To build on top of Bitcoin, you have to build in an encapsulated protocol. So think about how TCP works. Inside TCP, there's HTTP. Okay. All right. We'll just be a second. So TCP is inside IP, which is inside something like an Ethernet packet. So basically, you have a babushka doll, the Russian sort of doll inside a doll thing. Now, that doesn't mean you have next to each other or side chains or anything. You have something built inside another part of the protocol. You use script. When I said everything can be done, I meant everything can be done. So. Yeah, but I talked to Vince Cerf, you know, the one who basically was involved. And he said, if I had, to, I basically come up with the concept in about a weekend or two, you know, together with Bob Metcalf. If I fought a little bit longer, I would have been in privacy and I would have put in some kind of an identity system. And I, I, I just didn't have time for it because it was used only for 10 computers. And then it wouldn't have worked. That's the whole point. If he started doing that, it would be like some of the things in IPsec. It would just keep growing. Simple is actually very good because you can then build complex things on top of the simple things. Now, 2017, Enchain started. What, what do you want with that company? Uh, 2015, Enchain started. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, 2015, yeah, so continue. So, 2015. <laughs> On your Wikipedia, it says 2017. So, but yeah, no. But uh, you started in 2000 uh, in 2015. What is the goal? Of, what is the goal of the uh, of the company? Uh, research, development, and building a global sort of uh, commercial system. Thanks so much. Coming to Amsterdam.